What's up guys? Welcome to the first of hopefully three videos I'll be making looking at the tier and tier set bonuses in Cataclysm Classic Tier 11. And today we're starting with tanks. Now the way we're going to work through these tier lists is I've reached out to different members of the community that are a lot more knowledgeable about their class and specialization than I am to rank and slot them in somewhere on the list. That said, the meat of this video is in the discussion. The ranking is purely for content, so don't take anything too serious. Now for the tanking video, we have Subtle and Brother joining us. You may have heard of them, I'll leave links to their YouTube and Twitch in the description below. I encourage you to check them out. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. I do have more videos on the way, so that way you'll be notified. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the video. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, so before we jump into the tier list, I. Uh, uh, real quick, can you guys give me like a 30 second intro of maybe your background, WoW history, what you're doing right now in, in Cataclysm? Uh, maybe let's say Brother, if we could start with you. Sure, I'm uh, I'm Brother. I uh, I play a lot of tanks and DPS. I kind of just started making content about Cata because I saw there was a bit of a drought. And uh, I thought I could use my expertise of tanking this past few X Packs, TBC, Wrath, to you know try to be helpful. I main Feral Druid. I'm currently rank one and two for that, and I also play Blood Decay and a bit of Prop Paladin and Prop Warrior. Awesome, thanks. And and subtle yourself. Yeah, so uh, I'm subtle. I uh, I I've probably best known for like solo tanking things uh like illidan and uh heroic lich king stuff like that also do like lots of like just uh old raid solos and things like that uh currently playing with we go on ferlina uh day one cleared all the raids and uh been, been having fun there maining blood decay right now I actually have three blood decays I'm raiding on every week right now. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, so it's been fun. Blood decay is super, super fun in this expansion. Hell uh, yeah. And uh, playing prop value as well and just start prop warrior this week too. If for those watching haven't picked up already, these guys have hella tanking experience. Uh, many characters. So I hope this will be fun conversation. Uh, so looking on to... The specs, uh, I see, and we just arbitrarily have blood decays listed here first, uh, also being one of the most more popular specs. Why don't we start with them? So the tier set, I'm just going to pull it up here for blood, uh, assuming I'm looking at the right thing. Two piece increases the damage done by your death strike ability by 5%, and the four piece increases the duration of your icebound fortitude ability by 50%. So how are we feeling about the... DK set bonuses, and I'm not looking at it right now, but if you guys also want to speak to maybe how these items are statted, that'd also be interesting. Yeah, uh, I can start on this one. So, I mean, the tier set, it's not great. So, like, mo the majority of the pieces are, like, poorly statted for Blood DK. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's actually a really interesting situation where you actually want the DPS tier as a blood decay. Wait, really? Because it, it just has way better stats on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with the DPS tier, you actually get like perfectly statted items in every slot. Uh <laughs> basically basically haste, mastery, hit expertise. Those are like the four things we want the most of okay. which is pretty meh. And you'll notice like some of those pieces have like double avoid on them, which is like our worst possible like type of piece. Mm. Um yeah, so, uh, and then, like, the set bonuses themselves, like, they aren't, like, make or break. Like, the 5% DS damage. DS is your highest damage source, but ultimately that 5% damage equates to, like, a few hundred DPS. It depends on the fight and, you know, um, how much DS damage you're actually doing, but somewhere in the, like, three to 500 DPS range. Uh, 500 being, like, really at the, really at the top end there. Okay. Um, and uh but to even get the two piece you're already like wearing not ideal like statted pieces to get that mm -hmm. and then the four piece itself is pretty meaningless most of the time like six more seconds on ibf like the 50 percent sounds like like way better 
<laughs> like, it's it's good branding, uh, like saying fifty percent instead of six seconds. But uh, yeah, it's like it's usually gonna be inconsequential. Um, for the most part, like you pop your IBF for like you know some big dam, and the twelve seconds is plenty for that. Right. Occasionally, if timed like perfectly, it may get you from like one tank buster to another in some situations, but. Like by the time you have four piece, you already know how to like deal with that anyway. And like Bloody Key has so many cooldowns baseline mm -hmm. is just unnecessary. Uh the one time I can see it potentially being useful is if you get into some like really crazy like solo tanking or just like under tanking stuff where like if you were trying to like solo tank Halfus or something like that, and you just had like all these drakes on you mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, when we get into like crazy strats, then that six seconds of IBF, that might be super valuable. But right. Just for like normal tank gameplay, it's pretty worthless. Um, the uh, the four piece DPS is like kind of the ideal that I'm going for. Uh, Interesting. By, yeah, by, by going for four piece DPS over two piece tank, you actually gain about a thousand DPS. Wow, okay. So, and... You mentioned the like stats for the tank set are like really bad. Um, are you do you is it like are you losing survivability to go for the DPS four set or like just put on no. pieces or? Uh, so yeah, that's the really interesting thing about Kata is that uh, stamina on gear is completely based on eye level. Like all pieces of the same eye level have the same amount of stamina. So like the DPS tier has the exact same stam as like the tank tier. Uh, okay. So that that's what really has like elevated like DPS pieces as like tank options mm. is the fact that just everything has the same amount of stamina anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the real trade-off here is like the damage taken per second from the avoidance versus uh, the healing per second increase from getting the extra haste that increases your rune regen, but also increases your runic power generation from, uh, what's it called? Uh, Scent of Blood. So basically the healing per second increase you get from the DPS set offsets the damage taken per second uh, increase that you take by using the DPS set and like losing that avoidance. Okay. But also just like, the stats you're getting on the DPS set are like reliable. There's no like, oh, you have a chance to like randomly avoid an attack. Mm. And like you have no way of like planning around, like it's just gonna randomly happen at some point. So uh, going for the DPS set, not only just like baseline is like the HPS offsetting the damage taken per second anyway, it's just more reliable. Like every time it's going to pretty much play the same. You have some RNG with like your rune resets on runic empowerment, but for the most part, like you're getting more haste. Your rune regen is always going to be quicker. Your runic power generation is always going to be higher. So yeah, it's just way more reliable and just like, you know, better stats overall. Okay. Do you care at all for the, the set bonuses from the DPS here or no? It's just for the stats. So the two piece has no value for Blood DK. Uh, it doesn't like work with any of our abilities, but the the four piece is all right. I mean, it's uh, like 3% attack power and we have tons of attack power from Vengeance. So mm. it's pretty good. Um, and you're to get it, you're using all like ideally statted pieces anyway. So it's just kind of a win-win. Right on. Uh, brother, do you have anything to add on to that? I mean, I think Subtle covered everything perfectly. <laughs> I've swapped to his line of thinking. I, I was pretty heavy avoidance for, for prog, but I mean, if you can go in there and play the whole raid in 346 gear, I don't know. I think <laughs> going for the, the DPS tiers is great. Yeah. The extra haste is, uh, feels really fun to play with. So yeah, it's it's definitely a, a four piece DPS single. Okay. Um. All right, so with all that said, where where would you guys rank the I guess this is this is really interesting. So, uh, here let's do let's do two things. I will we'll have the blood the blood tier as the blood icon and we'll use the unholy DK icon to represent like the DPS tier for blood DKs. Where would you slot this in on a tier list? 
Um, so are we just talking about purely the set bonus or like the, like, uh, you know, items that come with getting uh, that set bonus? You can also include the items that come with. So um, okay. statting can come in way into account okay. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I'd put the DPS one probably at A tier. Like, okay. You have all like perfectly statted items. The four piece is solid. You just have a zero value two piece. That would be like the main thing, like keeping it from S tier for me. Okay. Uh, for the tank set, I mean, probably C tier because it's like pretty much all like poorly statted items and like the DS bonus is solid, but then it's like like the IBF bonus is so situational and like 99.9% .9 players are never going to, I don't think, run into a situation where they would like actually gain value from it. That's that's like, that's so, so funny. <laughs> yeah. The DPS tier is the way to go. Um, yeah. This it, is the cat of quirks, dude. We're, we're throwing you a curveball early. I, I guess so. Maybe I started with the wrong, wrong uh, class here. But actually, one question I had, so I know you guys are both in play in guilds that are like towards the high end of uh, raid progression, clear times, boss kill speeds, etc. Do you think these like rankings and would you recommend the same things to people that are in a more casual guild that say are like progressing through the raid right now? Yeah, I would. Um... I mean, if you need that extra six seconds of IBF during like normal play, you're probably doing some things like fundamentally wrong on Blood DK and that's mm -hmm. what you need to fix, not get the four piece tank bonus. Okay. That's fair. All right. Uh well why don't we why don't we move on to some bears? I know brother, this is your uh area of expertise. If you can uh walk me through the the tier and maybe i mean i'm hesitant to i can read off the tank tier again but if you would just end up not using it i'm like not really sure so do you use tank tier yeah so tank tier for bear it's uh you know looking at the two set it's pretty good you know last rate damage it's our like passive uh like dot damage and increases our rake and we can't weave a lot and bear weave a lot so you know it's a Solid two set, it's not useless like the like the DK one. Okay. Uh and then looking at the four set, it's uh it's kind of bad. It's kind of bad. So you look at it and you're like, oh wow, I get, you know, up to like three percent increased attack power every time I mangle in cat form. Um, you don't press mangle in cat form, like almost ever. It's like a bad button to press. You only press it if like your arms wear doesn't crit on pool. And uh that's about to, to put up the mangle debuff. Mm -hmm. And then the second half of the tier set is uh, like 50% duration on your on your big wall. So just an extra six seconds, same as the DK one. Um, Blizzard was not really creative with their four sets for tanks this tier. And that's kind of, kind of sad to see. But uh, in the sets I'm going to run, um, I won't be running four piece because uh, I don't think it's that great. To be honest, I think some of the off pieces provide um, better stats. Okay. They um, will get you to hit cap and expertise cap uh, better. The only time I could see it being useful is maybe you're sold tanking on a bear, but that's not really the role of the bear. The I think the you know the guardian is like the premier off tank in my opinion, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you should be optimizing around around that role instead of trying to get six more seconds of DR and yeah, I don't know the the four set kind of stinks for Feral. You basically just get your helm and your chest, and then you uh, you get a bunch of off pieces. That's the uh, that's the go to for the the gearing for the Feral. Fair enough. With that said, where where would you think Bear falls for their their tier tier sets? It doesn't sound that great considering you're not playing four piece and you'd rather wear different static gear. Yeah. Um I I mean I'd probably put it C tier too. Like it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> okay. 
the pieces i mean i don't know they all all the pieces kind of just have a bunch of crit and mastery on them and you're reforging some of that stuff off but uh what stats do you want i mean you do want crit and mastery but uh the way i play i go for hit and uh, expertise a lot of the time and i trim off my excess stats but yeah, you you definitely I don't know, I definitely put this at C tier. The the four set is pretty bad and the two set is okay. It's very okay. I mean if you want a good thumbnail, maybe you can put it in D tier, I don't know. Like I just feel comfortable <laughs> saying that. Okay, okay. Well maybe we can move it there. Um I love the thumbnail play. That's so good. Yeah, sure. I'll put it in D that like my face it shocked right next to it. Uh Sure, why not? Um, okay, word. Uh, next up we have Protection Paladin. Uh, I don't know which one of you would want to start on this one. I think Subtle is uh, more in depth with the Prop Paladin the sex pack. Yeah. I haven't played it that much. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I've mostly been Blood DK, but I have done two raids on Prop I, uh, GDKP, you know, clearing like i i don't know nine or ten heroic something like that okay but, um that's my that's my experience right now i'm prop Valley. definitely definitely still working on it but uh prop Valley, uh i mean this is maybe another one you might uh not be expecting but you actually the standard build is like you go for one piece of tier like you don't even get a <laughs> bonus because uh basically prop Valley's whole thing is combat table coverage is that uh you probably know about that right or combat you know table coverage is. no maybe i should just never heard of it really quick anyway for viewers but. okay sure um yeah so basically i mean you might have know it as like avoidance cap or something like that okay um, yeah from before yeah, yeah so basically it's like uh getting enough dodge parry uh miss and block so that you push uh normal hits off the table basically mm, okay in the past we did it to like push crushing blows off the table Mm -hmm. But in this expansion, we do it to push normals off the table. Okay. Uh, blocks in Kata are w when you have the meta gem, thirty-one percent reduced damage. Uh, they change it from just flat value. Oh wow! So okay. Thirty-one percent reduced damage. So by pushing normals off the table, you guarantee that like the worst hit you're gonna take is reduced by thirty-one percent. So, and then uh, Holy Shield now like increases how much you block for by 20%, so it brings it up to 51%. So essentially, it's a shield wall, right? Uh, 30 second cooldown on Holy Shield lasts 10 seconds. So a third of the time, you can have essentially a shield wall against melee attacks, well, physical attacks. That's crazy. So you can probably see like why it's so important that you push these normals off the table, because like then you reliably are always getting this reduced damage. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the core part of prop alley is for survivability is just pushing those normals off the table. So we're kind of just doing whatever we can to get as much combat table coverage as we can. Which okay. Is just the combination of, you know, parry, dodge and block. Uh, it includes miss too, but we have no way to influence that anymore because like the defense stat doesn't exist. So it's just the 5% base miss chance and then uh, you lose, you know, 0.2% of that per level the mob has over you. Okay. So, uh, basically, you're just trying to get as much combat table coverage as you can, and the best way to do that is only use one piece of tier. So, yeah, uh, the chest, that is what, uh, what you'll use. Interesting. And so that's just, it's the only item that has, like, desirable stats for that to meet mm -hmm. the combat yeah. table coverage. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, mastery and uh, parry. Uh, so basically, Prop Valley loves anything that's like mastery plus avoidance, it, unlike Blood DK. Um, yeah, uh, just anytime you see mast and avoid, it's like that's probably your bis. Okay. Um, there are some exceptions because like mastery doesn't uh, DR, unlike dodge and parry. So some items that have really high amounts of mast can be like more desirable especially because you can reforge like whatever the secondary is on there right to uh dodge or parry so uh yeah mastery is just like the most efficient way to get combat table coverage and 
I mean, just always remains the most efficient way because it never DRs. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, there are like some balance sets you could do where you might get like two piece uh, for the Crusader Strike uh, damage, but it's, yeah, the the standard kind of prop I build that you'll for sure want, like going into Firelands is uh, going to be just the one piece, the uh, tier chest. Okay, right on. Um, well, Prop Paladin, where are we putting it? Uh, similar to, I think, most of the tech sets, it's not sounding too hot. <laughs> not looking uh, great for tech sets. It's no, just, it's... it's yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, is there a way you can add F to this? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. Gets, like, the only way it gets worse is if like you use zero instead of one. I don't know. I feel like it's got to be below the feral one. Yeah, you don't even really use the two piece i mean it sounds good like the crusader strike damage but i don't like prop is just so reliant on avoidance you can't really afford to uh yeah to go for it that's like the big thing that like makes blood decay so good is like just baseline you're so incredibly like tanky and you know self-sustaining that like you're totally free to go for like expertise and you know mm. like, uh, four piece dps bonus and stuff like that gotcha uh go for hit cap all that stuff for prop value it's like you have to invest so much in just getting like your survivability to a high level mm. that like you have to forgo all these things that blood decay can just pick up whenever they want gotcha wait the thumbnail just got like infinitely better we can have the bear d <laughs> and then i can have like the mystery <laughs> class in f holy <laughs> <laughs> okay, right on. Uh, brother, do you have anything to add to that? The prop pally story or nah? Um, it, It's just so weird. I, I think it's just like the, the patch that we're on, the final patch of the game. But like looking up Blood Decay and, and Feral, they just they feel like complete pl like playable classes when you're on them. And then you hop on the shield tanks and it's just it's a completely different video game when when you're on them. It's uh. It's pretty crazy, but the hope is that both of those classes are gonna scale and catch up to the the blood decay and feral. But right right now in phase one, it's it's pretty rough, it's pretty grim. But it's playable. But yeah, like, I have a lot more fun on the sure other ones. Playable. Like I mean, there's plenty of people like bringing like off tank like prop alleys and stuff, prop warriors, but. Like, you just can't be a main tank, like, on these classes, which mm -hmm. a lot of people who play tanks, they won't be a main tank. Um, so it, it does suck that you're kind of relegated to that, like, add duty kind of role. The the potential's there, though. Like, like when you get full combat table coverage and then you get, you know, some higher eye level gear, you're able to get, like, uh, expertise soft cap, you're able to get hit cap while also having full combat table coverage, the, the classes are going to feel way, way better. Right. I was going to say, it sounds like once we get into later phases when there's more stats on gear and you're able to like hit your combat table coverage cap or whatever you would uh, refer to that mm -hmm. as, plus, as you said, invest in other stats, it becomes a bit more viable of a, or a bit, bit more, a bit better to play. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Protection Warrior. Final one. Brother, if you want to... I mean, you, you haven't tanked on Prot Warrior, have you? Or you say you're going to try to this week? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm tanking uh, my guild's G-Bed this Friday on it. Yeah, we'll see what we want to do. Okay. Uh, how many heroics we actually want to try for. Mm -hmm. But I haven't really been putting together too many gear sets. But, I mean, it's kind of well itemized for the avoidance. To get you to like close to ctc like like the prop bow uh prop where he really wants uh to get the ctc and all of the all of the tier has like really itemized like well itemized stats for that okay right on um really high avoidance high mastery and almost all the slots like uh, like every single piece that you're probably gonna end up wearing in this, in a phase uh is gonna have mastery and avoidance like like prop paladin does so i mean i might i might go for four set on my prop paladin i don't know it looks it looks pretty decent what do you think so yeah i i'm a fan of the four piece for prower like you'll 
You'll notice it's the exact same bonus for all the other tanks, but the mm -hmm. like, big difference is that Shield Wall is a two minute cooldown, and all the other tanks, their walls are three minute cooldowns. Oh, so, interesting. Um, getting the 18 second wall on a two minute cooldown is a lot more appealing. Also, like the stats are solid, like Brother uh, mentioned. And, uh, like, I mean, for Prower, it's a little bit tougher to get full combat table coverage because uh, they don't get as much block per mast because uh, they also get crit block in addition to, like, regular block. So, like, the trade-off there is they just get less block. Um, and crit block doesn't add to combat table coverage. It's, like, a separate roll after, like, you've already rolled that you're blocking the attack. Then there's, like, a secondary roll on whether or not it's a crit block. What? Which Sorry, just, what is a crit block? Uh, it's just a block for double the amount. So instead of 31% with the metagem, it would be 62% reduced damage. Gotcha. Okay. So because of that, like you can't actually get to like full combat table coverage um, on Prot Warrior. As far as I know, there maybe there's some tech out there where people figured out a way to do it. But uh, it seems like kind of the best way to do it is you go like four piece uh tank tier and then you use like symbiotic worm as uh one of your trinkets so what that does is like when a melee attack reduces you below 35 percent hp you get like 1100 mast um and that's like enough mass that that should get you to full combat table coverage uh. so basically you, you baseline you're gonna have like a lot of combat table coverage uh the trinket gets you to full combat table coverage anytime it procs and then you have shield block on a uh, 30 second cooldown, uh, gives you 25% block. Uh, and then any excess, anything that goes above full combat table coverage turns into crit block. Mm -hmm. So basically like Prower is gonna be a little bit under combat table coverage cap, but they have various ways that they'll like frequently be at combat table coverage cap. So yeah, j j that's just kind of the difference there between prop value and prop where is like prop value will just passively be there. Uh, prop where will have high combat table coverage and then like sporadically like with uh, shield block and procs and stuff be uh, reaching that. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, I would recommend the four piece as well. That's what I'm leaning towards. Right on. Okay. Hey, the first tank that actually wears their tier. Let's go. Uh, yeah. So I knew we'd get there. <laughs> Protection Warrior, where where are we feeling this this one lands in then? Um, I mean maybe B. I I can't feel like B probably at least could be A. Yeah. What do you think, brother? Yeah, the two pieces uh is pretty nice. Just the fine shield wall or shield same damage, and then the the four set for the the shield wall was really really nice on uh. On the prop where I think B is fine, honestly. Yeah. I think, I think I don't know. All the tier sets this phase are just so generic. I don't, like I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Like, there's no real like flavor to them. It's just like the exact same thing for like every tank. It's like okay, you get six more seconds on your wall. You get uh, you know, five ten percent more damage on like your main rotation ability. Yep. Yeah. It's really uninspiring. Yeah, I was just gonna say. That's wild. So the best tank tier set is the only DPS tier set. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty funny. That's wild. Okay. Well this is great. Um Brother and Subtle, I don't know if you guys have anything else you'd want to add, but this is this is good. I think that's it for me. Yeah, I think uh, I think that covers the tank tier sets. All right, Rocket. Well, hopefully it gets more exciting uh, next phase, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think Firelands get some cooler ones at least. So, yeah, we'll see. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, looking forward to that, I guess, if you're a tank player. Uh, cool. All right, uh, Brother Title, thank you so much for your time. Uh, that's all I wanted to go through for today. So, yeah, right on. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was fun chatting. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. 100%. I'll catch you guys around. Right, did you?